You're live. We have a loud mic. Oops. All right, we are a little bit after 6.30, so I will call tonight's workshop to order. And um, I don't have an agenda in front of me. Thank you. Thank you. Karen, could we have you just note roll call for the record, please? Doing so right now. Excellent. And I'd like to invite everyone to rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, um, so just a couple of quick opening opening comments on logistics for this evening. Um, we are in workshop session and a joint session between City Council and the EDA. Um, the upstairs community room where we have been meeting was not available tonight, so we are in this more formal setting. However, let's do our best to keep this as informal as possible. Let's keep it a working session. Um, and so feel free to please jump in, fully participate. We need you to fully participate um, as if we were upstairs. Does that make sense? All right, and also before I kick it over to um, Bruce and the presentation for the downtown plan, I just wanna take a moment to welcome our new community development director, who I believe most of you had not had an opportunity to meet. Um, Abby Whitman has recently joined us and we're very excited to have you with us. And um, I look forward to all of you getting able to know her a little bit more in the upcoming weeks as we um, move forward with our um, next steps here for the downtown plan. So welcome Abby. All right, with that, um, Dan, any opening comments before we kick off? Uh, nope. Feel All right, I will turn it over to Bruce and um, good to see you, Bruce. All right, thank you, Mayor. Good to see everyone. Um, primarily, we're gonna be focused on implementation tonight. We had earlier uh, last week sent Dan uh, draft chapters uh, of the plan, all but the implementation chapter. And so the materials that you have in front of you are materials for review and they'll form the basis for then assembling that implementation chapter and pulling together the entire uh, draft document and get ready, getting ready for the last round of community engagement. Um, starting on about Thursday, we think we'll have all that pulled together. So I'd like, what I'd like to do is go through um, review of some of the th items that you have before you and then uh, really kick into dis discussion on the projects as they've been identified so far within the plan and talk a bit about costs. So, um, so far I'm not seeing, do you know Dan? You're up, well it's on your second. It should be. It's your second monitor. I just need you to oh, well, how do I do that? Close out of this. Close out of this. Display settings. Scroll down. Oh, scroll. Oops. Yeah. Is it just <laughs> you clicking on number two? Yeah. And Jerry, if any of the table, if any of the tables are, are a better view of the monitors, feel free to adjust. Hmm. Usually, it just it grabs just onto it. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, there's also Jerry. If you wanted to use this one here, you could sit here and use this monitor. Are you okay, Susan? Because I can pull another chair to look at this monitor if you want. Okay. There you. Great. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sorry about that. Well, let's try this again. <clears throat> okay, so uh, you've got this graphic in front of you too, but I want to highlight or at least hit on a number of the components that are part of this. Um, this is a consolidation of a couple of different graphics that you've seen in the past, and essentially this represents 
what, what we are suggesting as the final downtown guide plan. Um, so this is kind of the comprehensive graphic element that shows the components of the plan uh, that are, is being proposed. Um, a couple of items on orientation. The, the heavier kind of dashed outside line represents the district. That's about 72 acres or so, uh, the study area district. There is some descriptive text, the titles that you see, uh, that's a little bit larger font than others. Those kind of represent the, the core or the elemental frame elements within the downtown plan. Um, and uh, you all know that we're essentially focused on, at the center of the district, the Broadway Avenue Lake Street intersection. So that represents the middle of this diagram or middle of this plan. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna hit or touch on the, the, um, the fundamental pieces first. Uh, the first one being the downtown loop trail. If you remember, the uh, primary organizing component of the plan is the suggestion for creating a loop trail about a mile long uh, that circumvents the downtown district. It uses uh, for a portion of that trail the Hardwood Creek Trail and then creates a new designated walking loop um, around the perimeter that reaches to and touches the lake through uh, Lakeside Memorial Park. And you see that in kind of the yellow or the mustard color um, line, both dashed and solid on your uh, layout plan. Lakeside Parkway is a newer element that we talked about at the last meeting. I think the last meeting was the first time you saw this. And the notion here is that one of the key findings that we made as we were uh, doing, going through the planning process is that Lakeside Memorial Park really is fairly isolated from the rest of the experience of downtown. And integrating Lakeside Memorial Park with everything else that happens downtown, um, uh, we view as a really important component to uh, both making the park work as well as the park contributing to both the experience and the economics of downtown. So in combination with the loop trail that we just talked about, which integrates all those things, the second notion is to create this parkway um, concept or parkway lakeside uh, loop that starts at First Street Southeast, um, extends through uh, past the, the uh, gone commercial property, and then uh, alongside Lakeside Memorial Park and comes back out to touch Lake Street at Second Avenue Northwest. So it's a bit of a horseshoe parkway. And the idea is that it creates a continuous access experience for people going to Lakeside Memorial Park or people wanting to drive by Lakeside Memorial Park rather than going through a series of parking lots in order to make their way through that space. So it helps unify all those different areas, all what are currently parking lots um, on the lake side of Lake Street. <clears throat> so that's another organizing or uh, important component. Those two um, elements really make up uh, these fundamental kind of organizing features and shifts within uh, the downtown. Uh, now I'm just gonna kind of walk through the rest of the elements on this plan. The first is the relocation of the existing boat launch. So on the north, if you can see my, yeah, you can see my cursor on the screen if you happen to be looking at the screen. Um, but the current boat launch is at the northern edge of Lakeside Memorial Park. It's a DNR boat launch. Um, the city um, is very engaged in operating that as well. And I think we, you all came to the conclusion at the last meeting that relocating that boat launch um, even though it is a, a nice feature downtown and brings people to town, um, it is really a distraction for the things that are happening in that space uh, between Lake Street and the lake. So relocating that boat launch to another spot, maybe really close to downtown, but not in the center or the core of downtown, um, would have a really significant impact on both the quality and the opportunities of retailing along Lake Street adjacent to the boat launch, um, as well as just circulation and parking issues that you kind of continually have um, as a result of that boat launch. So that's relocation of the launch. <clears throat> Next one is Lake Street Skyway. Um, this suggests the possibility of in conjunction with 
uh, construction of a, a district parking facility on the west side of Lake Street, creating a Skyway connection from that parking facility to the east side of Lake Street and ultimately touching down and making a pedestrian connection to the park. So the Skyway itself uh, very likely would be coupled with a district parking facility on the west side of Lake Street and probably doesn't make sense from an implementation standpoint unless you do construct a district parking uh, piece on that west side. So it's fairly coupled with that particular option for parking. Next one, optional district parking structure locations. So you'll see three uh, dashed red uh, bubbles within the downtown plan. All three of these have been explored in concept um, and are, are within the downtown plan document uh, that's drafted so far, uh, but have been explored from a district parking facility standpoint. So this would be a, a parking structure um, it would help make up the shortfall that we believe exists in parking downtown. And it looks at three different approaches or options for locating that facility. Two of them are associated with redevelopment. So in other words, there would be, you know, maybe a component of redevelopment that would be facing Lake Street. Maybe there'd be retail on the main level with housing above. Um, and those two are on either side of Lake Street. A third option takes the existing parking lot adjacent to Lakeside Memorial Park and essentially um, includes or adds a second level of parking and digs it into the ground about, ha about half a level below grade. So uh, there'd be a half level that, that's buried and then a second level that would be exposed and about five, six feet above the current grade. So all three of these you know, they, they add different amounts of parking, but for cost estimating purposes, we just used about 150 stalls or thereabouts. Um, they all would accommodate essentially that level of, of parking in the downtown area. Uh, the, uh, excuse me, the, the uh, canoe kayak launch and secure tie up. So, one of the things we heard early in the process is that uh, it would really be great to be able to bring a kayak or canoe downtown uh, to have a safe place to either launch it or bring it in and tie it up and secure it and then have drinks, go to lunch, whatever. And so that's identified as a spot. We moved this location. It wasn't a different location. We moved it uh, to be adjacent to the existing beach. Um, thinking that that is probably a safer and more secure location for a canoe kayak launch. I'm kind of looking at Jerry and see if I get a nod or a shake of a head <laughs> on that one. <laughs> He's the expert on this topic. Um, the next one, gateway landscaping. So gateway landscaping is su suggested both for the center median as well as the boulevard spaces on either side of Broadway as it approaches Lake Street. Um, you've done this area in the past, it um, needs some refresh. So much of this is refresh of what you already have, but um, it's a really important space and set a tone for people coming into the downtown core from Broadway Avenue. Veterans Memorial. This is really more of a, we wanna make sure we identify it as something that the community is already working toward. Um, so there's a, a group, as we understand it, involved in conceptualizing a, a veterans memorial in Lakeside Park. And uh, this is the location that's shown on the plan uh, that the group is looking at. Um, and this is a conceptual design so far that they have created. So we essentially just kind of dropped the plan uh, that they're working on into this diagram. Next one, relocate the beach house, the warming house. Um, and we've got a couple of different options for that. So if you remember um, fairly close to where the memorial is proposed, there is a circular building that is the beach house, restroom facility. And uh, it's probably past its useful life um, in many ways and could, could uh, stand to be replaced. So we are identifying a couple of options for a replacement. One would be to build it into uh, the 56 First Street building, commercial building owned by Gone. 
Um, and if the opportunity arises for that to occur, uh, to build a plaza space around the perimeter of that building, that would allow a public use and a public connection to the beach. The second option, if that one um, maybe doesn't work out uh, as a possibility, would be uh, the possibility or the idea of relocating the current play area from its current location, building the beach house in that spot, and then relocating the playground to an area more central in the park. And uh, that's suggested for a couple of reasons. The current spot for the playground is a little isolated, <clears throat> has a great proximity to the beach. That's the advantage of it. Um, but from a visual standpoint, it's a little tucked back. So this option um, would make it really a central component of what's going on in the park. Next one, redevelopment opportunity sites. So we've identified three, essentially three sites within the downtown area that seem prime for uh, redevelopment. There are certainly more and more will pop up um, as sites are assembled by development interests, uh, but these are three that seem uh, most primed for today's um, market. And essentially they are the site immediately south of Broadway on the west side of Lake Street um, then we skip over a few properties and there is a vacant parcel uh, to the south of that, really close and actually including a portion of the wayside uh, that we'll talk about in a minute. And the third is the Vanelli's block or the gone uh, block that is being considered right now for redevelopment. So we've identified those, we've conceptualized what might be possible from a development standpoint on those properties knowing that or and recognizing that a developer is going to propose you know what they um, see fit and what they want to want to construct as part of their project next one centennial drive streetscape improvements uh, we've talked about this one from the start that centennial drive all the way from first um, avenue southwest or northwest i always get confused southwest i believe to uh, Second Avenue Northwest, that whole stretch uh, of Centennial Avenue is a really important access for businesses and circulation through downtown apart from Lake Street itself. So uh, that really should be a fantastic experience from a visual standpoint. It should be aesthetically interesting. It should um, provide some pedestrian flow in addition to autos, just the functionality of autos. So this suggests the possibility of creating streetscape enhancements along Centennial um, uh, within the right-of-way and potentially outside the right-of-way um, as part of that corridor. It's recognized that Centennial is not wide enough today to do the kinds of things that you would want to accomplish with streetscaping in that area. So this would be an element where you would need to and want to coordinate <coughs> with adjacent property owners. So maybe it would be done uh, as properties redevelop. Maybe there are opportunities for properties to get something that they need to accomplish with enhancements to Centennial as part of an exchange. You know, whatever the methods are um, to accomplish that improvement would be a nice enhancement to downtown. Neighborhood trail connection is the next one. So uh, this is just a, sh a very short segment of trail <coughs> that links from the Hardwood <coughs> Creek Trail to the west into the residential neighborhood. Um, there is a private property that um, wouldn't allow that to happen without it being in conjunction again with a redevelopment strategy or some other uh, interest that that property owner has. But this would be a, <coughs> an important and a very convenient access from the neighborhood to the Hardwood Creek Trail and ultimately to the downtown loop as well. Uh, the next one down is the uh, Regional Trail Wayside Park. And this one maybe should actually be in larger text as a, a really important organizing element. But this uh, notion is to create a, a gateway for Hardwood Creek Trail users um, and a park-like uh, space in conjunction with <coughs> redevelopment that would provide maybe some shelter, some picnicking, some water and restrooms, um, bike lockup, 
areas, um, orientation or wayfinding so that people who are coming into downtown from the, tra uh, the trail who don't know downtown um, can learn more about it and understand where they can get food and, and uh, drink and so on. So that uh, is at generally the southern end of the project area and adjacent to the Loop Trail. Okay, a few more things on the right-hand side of this diagram. Transient boat slips. So uh, today you have a, a terminal dock, I believe they're called, essentially a, a single dock that is used as a transient slip. And what this suggests is the possibility of creating finger docks um, as part of that and expanding the number of transient slips you have available in the downtown area. I've been attempting to get a hold of DNR representatives to see what's possible to make sure that what we're suggesting is within the realm of regulatory possibility. I cannot get a response back yet. So I'll keep trying, um, uh, but for now just know that I still can't with confidence say that what we're suggesting is going to be regulatory, regulated, regulatorily possible. <clears throat> the boat club docks are shown essentially the same number and the same configuration that um, exists there today. Um, same thing with the fishing pier and the overlook uh, in that spot. Uh, an important component of this is to think about how we use ice in a stronger way in the activity and the experience of downtown. So we're calling this the wild ice recreation area. And the notion is that there might be broom ball, there might be maybe speed skating, there might be snowmobile events, um, there might be all kinds of wintertime recreational activity that are happening, that's happening on the lakeshore in the downtown that is, again, an adjunct to uh, commercial reasons people are coming downtown. So it broadens the experience, it broadens the reasons for people to come downtown. Those essentially are, oh, there's one more, I'm sorry. Um, the snowmobile route that exists today, essentially along 2nd uh, Southwest, that just needs a little bit of cleanup. So you'll see in the project list some uh, enhancement and investment in that snowmobile route access the lake from the Hardwood <clears throat> Creek Trail. Okay, a couple more items I'm almost missed. One is that on uh, both crossings of the Loop Trail, we're suggesting pedestrian activated crossings or hawk signals. Um, so you'll see one at the north along 2nd Avenue Northwest and at the south along 1st Southwest. <coughs> Uh, Banshell. In the spot where uh, the current boat launch sits, if the park is expanded over that space, it opens up the opportunity to do something more with the park. Because you have a history, such a great history of performance at Lakeside Memorial Park, there may be a warrant and an interest in creating more of a formalized facility that will um, allow you to conduct performances at the lake. So this suggests the possibility of a band shell, probably a built-in restroom facility, um, and some uh, great lawn kind of space that might either be fixed seating for a portion or just lawn space. Uh, you'll see a note on here that says Paseo. And the notion of the Paseo is that it's a, a pedestrian way from Lake Street to the lake front. And it would be the touchdown point for the Skyway if you happen to do the Skyway. But it would create this mid-block connection all the way through buildings and development and all the way to the lakefront in line with the new transient boat slips. That, I think, represents the full spectrum of suggestions with the plan. Questions or clarifications? Um, at this point on the plan. Questions from the group? Lots to digest. Um, I, describe, can you more carefully or more thoroughly describe, if I'm on this Lakeside Parkway and I appreciate the concept of having a better buffer between the park and the parking, existing parking mm -hmm. lot, what, 
what what does that look like? What is what is that? Or how much definition? Mm -hmm. What what's the difference of, of what's new versus what's there today, which is essentially a sidewalk? Mm -hmm. Yep. So today, uh, as far as the parkway, you you yeah. asked about the parkway, correct? Yeah. Yep. So today, if you remember, there uh, there's pull-in parking right up to the park. Um, then there's a, a drive bay through a parking lot um, adjacent to that. So what would happen is that there would be uh, parallel parking on the parkway itself. The parkway might take on a different character than the parking lot. Maybe there's red chip seal. If any, any of you have driven the Minneapolis parkway system, you know that they take on a different character than a Minneapolis street because they have this red chip seal. They use different kinds of lighting, different signage. Um, and it creates this continuous experience. So the notion here is that it would feel less like you're driving down a bay of a parking lot and more like you're driving down a parkway that has relatively narrow lanes going in either direction and parallel parking on the sides. So it is more of a vehicle, it's, it's a vehicle feature, not a pedestrian feature. It is. Okay. That's, yep. that's helpful, thank you. And the pedestrian feature, at least at Lakeside Memorial Park, um, extends along the lakeshore. Um, we did have that on the parking lot side of the park. And uh, this version, since the I think the last time you saw it actually, it moves it to the lakeside and creates that promenade along the lake. Well, I think to, to do that, Parkway, you, you're really changing the flow off of that second roundabout, mm -hmm. right? Because yep. right now it loops back up towards the restaurant. Right. So, yeah. Yep. So that's a key change. It would allow one. people to, to move through that space. I think it's a good one. That, that is always just a bit of a mess. Pedestrians, is, yeah. kids and dogs everywhere and cars and all sorts mm -hmm. of things that don't <clears throat> blend well. So, okay, good. Yeah, nice. Other questions as we look through this? I noticed that you didn't um, show any of the area north of Broadway on the east side of Lake Street as potential redevelopment, and I was curious as to why. And then on your parking numbers, um, a couple of meetings ago you had three levels of parking recommendations. Mm -hmm. Which one did you choose for these estimates, please? So, um, actually, the if you can see my pointer, but the the um, what is suggested as one of the parking options, the district parking options, the one on the east side of Lake Street, that's a little bit more squarish rather than long, that actually is redevelopment. So the notion there would be that redevelopment would happen along Lake Street and uh, the parking would be built into that redevelopment strategy. So it'd be built into the hill uh, along Lake Street, probably parking would be extended underneath the new buildings that would be constructed on Lake Street, as well as moving toward the lake. So it's a combination of the two, both redevelopment and um, parking. But maybe we should be clear, Susan, if we weren't clear enough on this diagram. Got it. Yeah, I, I had that question I, I think as a, well. A, mm -hmm. Something that the community yeah. is very interested in. Right. And okay. so if we were to highlight yeah, that, absolutely. That helpful. And we'll highlight them then for both because that same strategy is applied on the west side of Lake Street to that bubble yes. that you see on the plan. Agree. So, okay. I'll, yeah. It's a good Sorry comment. that wasn't clear. And then which of the parking levels did you choose to have your, your 100 to 200 on? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. From a cost standpoint? No, when, no. when you were presenting things earlier, mm -hmm. you gave um, three scenarios for parking. Mm -hmm. um, one that was essentially oh, an urban people take transit. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. Yep. And so, I was just wondering which one you chose. Yep. So none of these meet. Uh, okay, I'll back up. The three scenarios were your current zoning. Second one was a, a step lower than your current zoning and a parking demand or parking requirement that is more in line with what most communities are looking at for their downtown districts. And then there was one that was lower, which was more of a informational piece that said, if you were a transit rich community, um, you could get by with a lot less parking. 
And um, numbers suggested that if you uh, take the middle one, the one that's a little bit lower requirement than your current zoning, you need about 220 or so additional stalls to meet the demand of downtown as a district. This parking facility would not achieve that, but it would get you closer. So this is looking at about 150 in any of these. The uh, parking on the west side of Lake Street would be the easiest facility to expand that from 150 to something more. The other two are more constrained from a site standpoint, and I'm guessing the community would uh, not want to go up in elevation or height of that either one of those parking facilities. Um, and there might be more allowance or uh, comfort with that on the west side. Thank you. Okay, good. Questions? Maybe just a little, oh, go ahead, Jerry. Well, you know, there's significant number of components involved in this master plan. I don't know how many there is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is certain, certain components of this that only makes sense to be done before the next fiscal development plan. Yep. So have you looked at prioritization? So for example, like the, the lake side, you can build that. I mean, until the boat ramp gets relocated, mm -hmm. you can't even, I mean, so they can't do that. Yep. So have you looked at any kind of prioritization of these 15 different elements? Like you look at the three before this or after mm -hmm. this? Yep. So um, we've started that, but we really wanted to use this meeting okay. to hear from you about what your priorities are. And if you look at the, the memo that we're going to review in a little bit, Jerry, the, you'll see in there that there are kind of boxes to check on early phase or a, a catalyst project, I think I called it early phase um, and later phase. So the logistics we should discuss because there are real logistics about logically doing something before another. But if we have the discussion, if you have the discussion about what really rises to the top from an interest standpoint, then we can work on the logistics and in the draft document put together a, a phasing strategy that logistically works and represents your preliminary thinking on what rises to the top. You know, one of the biggest things here, obviously, is that relocation of the, of the boat mm -hmm. launch. And I think that, you know, I, I ran that by a couple people, and a lot, some people apparently make sense, and other, you know, you're always going to have an opinion either way. But I really think we need to identify where that would go before this would go too far public. Mm -hmm. Because people are going to be like, what are, you, what are you guys talking about? So I don't know how, we, how that happens or when that happens, but I think it needs to before this gets yep. out to public. You'll see in the projects that there are a few additional studies that are suggested to kind of roll out of this plan. One of them is a boat launch relocation study. Um, and it's, of course. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I couldn't, yeah. I, I was thinking that as I was writing these, like, oh, you're getting this from a planning consultant. This is not okay. But, you know, there are certain things that you just are gonna need more information on than the downtown plan can provide. And that's one of them. Um, so, I, I hear what you're saying, uh, that's a real issue, but I think um, if that falls on the heels of this plan and you begin to explore options and sites, um, that is an outcome of the downtown plan, but probably can't be rolled into the downtown plan. So is this then something that the group needs to determine, like, do we go back and do we see plan A and B, one with? relocating one with it out with you know keeping it because you know we had the scene two going down and now we're looks mm -hmm. like this is I mean this is obviously what you're suggesting but mm -hmm. do we do we continue to work the other one as well or, or would you suggest not I well I think there are probably there are many components that you know if this doesn't happen it's going to be hard to do this or if we build the parking ramp on the west side of Lake Street, we're gonna to want to consider the possibility maybe of this Skyway connection across. 
that won't happen if you don't build a parking ramp on the west side, very likely. And if the boat launch doesn't get relocated, there are other things in this plan that won't happen either. I think um, you'll always kind of play that game. Um, what matters, uh, this is just my suggestion, but what matters I think to you is that you have a vision for the future. And a downtown plan, as much as anything, um, helps you recognize opportunities when they flash up before you. And uh, there may, you know, maybe there isn't an opportunity for a boat launch relocation today, but maybe one pops up a year and a half from now. And having it in this plan, even though we're creating the plan not knowing that opportunity exists, is smart for you to to make it part of the part of the plan because then it allows you to jump on it because it's in a policy document that you've adopted. That's my suggestion. A minor, just a minor comment, but yep. I, I notice it's included in your costs as well, so I'll throw it out there. Um, you have two pedestrian activated crossings, mm -hmm. um, and one is at Second Avenue and the other is at the Southern part. Um, First. Or, yeah, thank you. Um, Second Avenue Northwest, isn't that already there? So you have a pedestrian crossing that doesn't kind of meet the current standards of hawk signals. It's not at the intersection. It's down about 50 feet uh -huh. or 100 feet. It's okay. really yep. strangely located. Yes. Really strange. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I think as, any recon as part of any reconstruction of the streetscape, you would enhance that okay. and do everything you can to get it in the spot it should be. Got it. And, and at Second Avenue. Okay, that makes yep. sense. Um, should we review the way costs are put together a little bit? Can I just add one uh, question? Yes, on please. That? If, if let's say there was no parking structure on the west side, mm -hmm. um, is there, and I, Ryan would be the one to ask, I guess, but is there an opportunity to add a single signal in the center of downtown? Like there, what, you know, years before that's where it was, it was in the middle of downtown, so you don't have to walk all the way to one end to the other? Or, mm -hmm. uh, I, we, Without doing that, you know, whether or not, obviously, if there's not a parking on the west side, then there's not a Skyway, but yet to be able to, to mm -hmm. traverse that yep. through the middle of downtown would be nice than having to walk all the way down to the one. So you mean a pedestrian crossing? Yeah, in the Ooh. middle of I, maybe I, where that Skyway would, would be proposed. I right. Guess. I think um, that very well could be. Let me talk to the city engineer about that possibility. We haven't talked about that specifically. Um, we've talked about them at Broadway. That definitely is a possibility. Seems um, like less of an interest to the community. Um, but let me bring that up. As long as we're on that, do you know, and again, this would be Ryan's question, there's that signal at, at the, the new one at the high school. They have that hawk. Mm -hmm. thing, but there isn't one Only one in the first. state. That's the first one that's ever been put in at the state is at the roundabout. Is mm -hmm. That seems like something we should look at. So while we've done it once, we can do it again, right? right away, I like yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm going to switch to the cost document. <clears throat> oh, the text is too small to see anyway. But the document that I'm putting up on the screen is this one, and it includes a summary of the 19 projects that have been identified in the plan. So essentially what I've done is convert the recommendations or the suggestions that are shown in the guide plan uh, into construction projects. And then created project budgets uh, for each of them based on the information we know and the experience that we have doing other similar projects in other communities. So, um, a few things that I think are important for you to, to know in the way that I put together the cost estimates. And there are just a few examples that are on this page. It's, uh, it's not all of the projects, obviously, but it helps you understand or see um, both from a construction standpoint and a soft cost standpoint what has been rolled into these budgets. So you can think of these as capital improvement budgets, the way you might see them in your annual budgeting process uh, with the city. 
but essentially there are categories or line items of hard costs, actual construction components of the project, and then soft costs. The hard costs include a, a bottom line of construction based on uh, what we think we know about pricing in the construction market today, and then a mobilization factor that has been applied to every project as well. The soft costs represent a few different things. Um, there, you'll see three categories of contingency, a design contingency, construction contingency, and an owner's contingency. And this is something in the public sector that um, you wouldn't see five, six, seven, eight years ago. More and more communities in order to cover themselves when they're doing budgeting um, are beginning to use contingencies just like developers have forever um, or commercial uh, builders forever. Uh, in these categories. So the design contingency is a way of covering unexpected items that come up during a design process of something. The construction contingency is the same thing during the construction process. So we hit bad soils, we, um, you know, whatever it is, uh, is part of construction. And then the owner's contingency is used after the project essentially is done. And you say to yourselves, boy, I really wish we would have added this component to the project and it gives you some funds to be able to do that. Also included in that category of soft costs are the design engineering admin fees. Um, I think almost all the projects are using an 18% number in that category. Um, some of the projects are not because they're so simple. They really don't include design so much. Um, so the, the percentage is lower. But obviously the soft costs are all made up for the most part of percentages of the construction value of the hard costs. Um, so the notion or the idea is that we're attempting to get numbers to you that you can use for budgeting purposes in your CIPs, as well as to have conversations with potential funding partners, whether they're grantors or they are development partners um, what have you folks who uh, in some form or fashion may participate in your project and you can have intelligent conversations with them about how they could participate. So that's the attempt. Um, and then if you go back up to the top of that page, all of the different projects are identified, the budget numbers are, are identified, um, and just a little moniker about whether they are a, just visually a substantial cost, a high cost, a moderate or a low cost. Um, all told without escalation uh, factored in, uh, the downtown plan represents about a $28 million investment within the confines or within the study area of downtown. It does not include things that are outside of the downtown, such as the relocation costs of the boat launch. So, um, it includes the work that you would do to the park area to pull the boat launch out and to redevelop the park in that spot, but it does not include the cost of building a new boat launch somewhere else. Um, so that might be an important component to know. It also does not include um, escalation or inflation. So let's say that um, this is a downtown plan, or a, a 10 year plan, and you're going to um, roll out the investments in this plan over that decade. So you're going to experience escalation of these dollars over that time period. Um, the next phase of this, based on the information you share about priorities and ability to do a phasing plan, will for me to work on um, a um, capital sources and uses strategy. So as part of that, we'll identify um, kind of time frames of a of investments happening in a phasing plan, and I'll roll in assumptions at least about escalation for each of these projects. So when you get to the point of having a final plan, there will be escalation added to these numbers, and it's going to be higher than that $28 million. Um, but it's going to be, you know, for the most part, a real um, facsimile of what you might experience if you're gonna do the those projects. Make sense? Any questions on kind of the way we develop the numbers? Just a small question. What is mobilization up in the hard costs? So mobilization is a factor that contractors apply to 
most construction projects and it's getting equipment to the site. It's storing equipment, storing materials, um, those kinds of costs. And they typically uh, calculate it as a percentage of the overall construction value. Questions about overall cost picture. Sure, be a layered conversation as we go deeper. But mm -hmm. any any big picture questions at this point? So, how much of these total costs do we anticipate from private investment? Uh, at the sources and uses strategy will develop that. So, um, Dan, Pat, and I, and um, Abby have had, started to have conversations about who, what other potential sources are out there. Um, that might be participants in your overall investment picture, and what might they be interested in looking at from a funding standpoint. My, some of those examples are tax increment, um, municipal bonding, obviously that's your money, not someone else's, uh, some grants, um, uh, you know, maybe even getting into the categories of local, local option sales tax, um, different ways of, of uh, funding these aspects by different folks. So my interest will be in brainstorming as many possibilities of financial or funding partners of yours and getting those wrapped into the sources and uses strategy. Um, at this point, I, I think I'm suggesting, or I would suggest that the sources and uses strategy become a working tool for you and not something that's rolled into the plan. Um, but you'll have a, a kind of detailed and boring big spreadsheet of uh, capital expenditures lined up with capital sources in addition to yourselves. So what it will give you a picture of is of the overall $28 million nut, or maybe after inflation, the $40 million nut, um, how much of that falls into your category and how much you might expect from others. Until we have that, and maybe when it, whenever we're presenting this, I think it's helpful to spell that out that this is expected to be um, mm. a you know it's it's a redevelopment total of which some of that might be shared by other partners. Mm -hmm. So just maybe break that down, make sure that I'm thinking about this correctly. Um, so if we so take for example the um, the access the um, the, the neighborhood, um, the, the trail connector, the, trail, the, the regional trail connector, right? Mm -hmm. So there's some private properties on either side of that, that we, you know, you could turn into some sort of a partnership and some of those costs might be, you know, bore by those, those, mm -hmm. um, developers. Mm -hmm. Um, in that case, you're showing the total to get the end result, regardless of source, right? I'm just gonna make sure I'm correct. Following. Yep. Okay. What is not included in the cost estimate is any private redevelopment. <clears throat> so if Understood. you're building a parking ramp that is in conjunction with a redevelopment, it doesn't quantify what the development cost is, just what the public parking <laughs> ramp component might be. Quick question on the shoreline enhancement project. Yep. Is that the building of the kayak? space is that what you're referring to i think it includes that um i'm going to go to it shoreline enhancement what number is that 17 17. it's just shoreline reconstruction so right now you've got kind of a riprap edge that um, isn't super appealing or inviting mm -hmm. and this would you know, reconstruct that. It would probably use um, some different construction methods or techniques that might withstand ice a little bit better, um, create a little more visually pleasing shoreline. Um, so that's what's included in that one. So the question I have is, you know, looking at where you have the ice rink, and obviously you have it south of the docks, which yep. it could be over the docks because they're not used at the same time. Um, what about lighting for something like that out there? Mm -hmm. Is that built in here anywhere? Or how is that it is. incorporated? So the wintertime um, wild ice concept includes temporary boards, temporary lighting. So facilities that are gonna support that temporary facility out on the lake. Got it. Yep, it is included. 
I don't know if any of you have noticed that on Broadway just before Lake Street, um, on Broadway just west of Lake Street, um, I don't know whether it was city employees or a, a neighboring business, um, has stiffed that up, including a few tulips that look really nice. Mm. I think that the opportunity to partner with some of the areas, partner with some of the um, local organizations um, has, has possibilities. Mm -hmm. The Unification Group is working with the high school FFA to get us a plan for that little triangle garden. Um, so some of those partnerships may not be huge high dollar things, but they could be good community impact and help build community spirit that then drives more acceptance of price tag. Other questions related to this first pass at cost, Jerry? Uh, hey Bruce, the, you know, <clears throat> one of the larger cost components is the Lake Street Estate Project. Mm -hmm. Has there been a dialogue with the UNR that you know, get into the garden yeah. and see the silage as you want? Mm -hmm. So um, MnDOT is beginning to explore, I don't think I'm, no, I'm not speaking Andrew. Beginning to explore the possibility of turn back of Lake Street. Um, from a state highway to a county highway. So the conversation, we've, we've had conversation with MnDOT representatives about it, but only in very general terms. And part of the reason for that is that it may not be a MnDOT facility by the time you get to this project. Mm -hmm. yep. To the county. Um, never, that, the, never the city. No, I don't. I don't think that's in the cards. Okay. From what I understand. Turnbacks have not. Turnbacks have not <laughs> served us well. It would be a. No. That would be a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. yeah. Um, when MnDOT, you probably know this, Jerry, but when MnDOT or a, an agency turns back a roadway to another jurisdiction, um, there are turnback dollars that are associated with that transfer. Usually it represents a full reconstruction of the facility that exists there today. Um, that doesn't necessarily translate to a full reconstruction of your streetscape, but it might speed itself. We haven't had that experience in the past. Oh, I'm um, sorry. You all may remember that the county turned over North Shore Trail, turned back that to the city. There were not those dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well stated. <laughs> Once in a while, I can be kind. <laughs> yeah. It, but, uh, you know, I, I will say um, in sources of revenue and all things on the table, one of the things I think this group needs to keep on radar is what does that partnership look like? And uh, are we able to achieve what we want to achieve through that partnership or should we make a tighter push? Mm -hmm. Again, tough pill to swallow because our current maintenance, you know, we are not well funded in that regard and it's a struggle. And so to take on more is without, you know, we still don't have a great plan for North Shore Trail, for example, mm -hmm. um, would be challenging. But I do think, I mean, the, the, this, we're setting the stage for what's gonna happen 10, 20 years from now. now. Currently, I think most of us at the table would, wish that turn back conversations would have gone differently in the past. And so maybe we shouldn't be so quick to reach a conclusion mm -hmm. before we need to. Typically streetscapes are viewed differently than the streets themselves by the county or MnDOT. So the streetscape is your responsibility now and it always has been. I'm guessing that you paid for the construction of that streetscape at some point in the past as well. Um, so reconstruction would fall into your camp also, regardless of who owns it, whether it's MnDOT or the county. Um, <clears throat> however, there, the standards and the expectations that a county has versus MnDOT are usually different, sometimes vastly. Yeah, is, and where is the county? I mean, 
NDOT may want to do it, but it's, does the county want to take that on? Or, hey, we had the conversations there. Is Dan experienced just to put a flower pot up on 61 was an act of Congress. So do we even do anything close to this? It You're, really not was. Exaggerating. You're not exaggerating. You're not exaggerating. And to finally just get six pots downtown. So to do this, it almost, that's the only option. It has to be a turn back. There's no other option I don't, I don't see. Blake's right. And the, the county is currently has a study, or I don't think it started yet, but has planned a study for the churn back um, through Hugo and Forest Lake, and I'm not sure if I know, but that study is going to start soon if it hasn't already. Just to build, I have had a conversation with Washington County planner about the plan here. They, not to this level of detail, though, I just is the first time I've seen this level down, but they are aware that we are doing a downtown plan once after tonight, I will reach out and give them a copy of this. So they'll be aware of what we're planning so they can start to bring everybody to the table that needs to be at the table. So Washington County is aware that we're looking at something on the 61 corridor, um, but I didn't have details to give to them until right now. So I'll give those to Washington County this week. We did also have Commissioner Muir on at one of our, one of our meetings. So he has heard, heard versions of this, although not final. Okay. I I have a, a oh, question, yes. um, and this um, kind of builds on Jerry's question a little while ago regarding prioritization. It it seems to me that there's some low hanging fruit here, mm -hmm. and so as we continue to map this out, will there be some sort of kind of recommendation regarding cadence of? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's my first question. So thank you for that. Um, and then just a clarification for me, is there any change to the sidewalks, the width of the sidewalks on Lake Street? On Lake Street? Built mm -hmm. in, okay. There is. All right. okay. So it suggests essentially pulling in the curbs on both sides, okay. narrowing the roadway in, in order to okay. accomplish more sidewalk space, <clears throat> and then um, creating what's called the amen an amenity zone between the curb edge and the place where people mostly walk. Um, in order to create more separation from traffic and more of a comfortable space. Hey, I, I'm glad to hear that because I, I know it's pretty tight right now, especially mm -hmm. when you get big crowds downtown and we wouldn't want that to be a, if, I mean, if we're going to, you know, hopefully bring in some additional retail or whatever downtown, we certainly don't want, you know, mm -hmm. that barrier. We think in most spots you could accomplish, depending on what MnDOT or the county have required for the roadway, but based on where standards are today, if you could eliminate the center turn lane in a good chunk of the corridor, you can gain at least four feet um, on either side of sidewalk space. Okay, let's jump into prioritization discussion. <clears throat> so on page two of the memo, which seems to have disappeared from my screen, I'll open that again. Okay, beginning on page two, um, th the projects that are summarized in this cost spreadsheet are also described and um, the budget is carried over into this memo. And what I'd like to do um, is just listen to your discussion about prioritization, recognizing Jerry's comment that logistically there are some things that really need to come before others. So we don't have to create a one, two, three, four, five list, but to hear where you stand on general prioritization of all of these projects would be really helpful. Um, and what I'll do then is build a, a beginning phasing strategy um, that we can drop into the implementation chapter and get out for public comment. So essentially your notions or the things you identify as kind of rising to the top or maybe falling a little bit farther down in priorities um, will go before the public as part of this last round of community <coughs> engagement over the next few weeks. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna kind of tee it up. You'll see that within uh, each of the descriptions of the projects, one through 19, I think. There is a catalyst um, checkbox, an early phase checkbox, a late phase, or an opportunistic uh, checkbox. 
And essentially, Catalyst represents that low-hanging fruit that some of you talked about. Um, so they might be things that are not uh, big dollar items that are going to require a lot of time to assemble money for. Um, they might be things that are really impactful visually that the community is really interested in um, or you know, some other reason that they should go early. Early phase probably represents between two and five years. Later phase probably represents five to 10. And the opportunistic project uh, category is more of a project that if you get money that drops in your lap, maybe we should look at this one, but otherwise it, it really doesn't um, rise to a priority level for us. So I suppose we could do this in a couple of ways. We could go project by project through this, or um, we could just open it up for discussion and you all kind of jump around and I'll do my best to take notes. Thoughts? I, um, so I would appreciate going through project by project personally. I think there's some value to that, but I would be interested and in, I, I know staff is kind of receiving this at the same time we are just from a staging of infrastructure city <laughs> perspective, is there a, are there some just um, first things that need to go or barrier projects that if we were to sequence poorly would have a negative impact? Um, and I know I'm kind of putting yeah. and Patrick and Dan on the spot, but um, I, I have I, the same, I are, have the same question. I are think all pro from, a city, from our perspective, are all projects equal or and I know that's not the case, but. The one project that you have to be careful about is the streetscape and street structure because it disrupts everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it disrupts business, pedestrian traffic, 4th of July traffic. So out of all of your projects, you have to make sure you time that one correctly and put it where, where it fits. That's, that's, the, that's the biggest exposure. I mean. People can handle the park being ripped up a little bit or the boat dock being taken out, but when you start to fiddle with the streetscape and the concrete and you know you can't get to get your hair cut or whatever else is downtown, that's when you really run into problems. Do we, does that project, ideally, is that project done before we do a major parking structure or could those be sequenced in yeah. either order? I think that depends on where your parking structure is going to be. Right. Um, you know, if, if the parking structure is on the west side of 61, you may want to do the parking structure first or second. I don't, I don't know what is better. If the parking structure is on over the top of where the, the current parking for the park is, it probably doesn't have a lot of impact, so. Yeah, I, I you know, I was gonna ask the same question and that Mayor Bain asked. I, the thing that's not really clear to me um, or maybe let me back up a little bit. You don't want to redo something, right? You don't mm -hmm. want to jump ahead and then have whatever it is you've done impacted by that next phase, mm -hmm. you know, so that it creates an issue. And I and and I'm I'm not sure that I'm jumping ahead here. Maybe you have that kind of on the radar. That's the cadence question that mm -hmm. I was asking, right? Yeah. There's some low-hanging fruit, but we also don't want to attack that low-hanging fruit if there's a chance that it's gonna be disrupted in another phase, mm -hmm. for example. Well, how about if we, as you're discussing, if we try and just kind of raise a flag that if this one is high on your list, then this one probably also needs to be high because they're kind of interlinked or dependent on one another. Okay. As you, um, maybe before, and I promise we will get to a detail by detail kind of discussion, but as you think about our overall plan, are there certain elements of the, are there certain elements that you think are catalysts for others that if you, and I know we've got that listed as a category, but as you just know what you know about redevelopment mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. downtown planning or, or planning in general, do you see certain things that if we accelerate or do something faster, it is going to prompt additional growth development and maybe a faster um, mm -hmm. attainment of our goals? Do you, do, you, do you have some candidates that you would highlight of, hey, if you were in our shoes, you'd start here. Is mm -hmm. there some, any thoughts around that that um, come, jump to mind? I think the downtown loop is, a cat, is maybe not a, a catalyst project, but it's a catalyst for change in downtown. 
the pedestrian, the pedestrian yeah. Yeah. yeah okay i think the wayside um might be an opera the wayside park might be an opportunity that could be lost if the site redevelops without your involvement um i think uh the parkway is going to be reliant on other things that are happening adjacent to the parkway mm -hmm. and actually might be built in pieces. If an uh, example might be if the gone development of the Nellie's block redevelops, you're going to want to jump on that right away as part of that redevelopment project. That, mm -hmm. that component of it. Understood. That's helpful. So with that, maybe let's kind of, do you want to walk us through each one sure. individually? Yeah, I won't, I won't spend much time talking about what each project entails. If you have questions about what they entail, um, be sure to ask, but there, I've done my best to kind of summarize what each project includes. The Lake Street Streetscape project uh, represents the full corridor or the full length of the study area. Um, and that's obviously a big ticket item. That is a $5.3 million um, suggested project budget. Um, and that includes both modifications to the curbing in order to narrow the street and gain more space for sidewalk and amenities and then development of all of those sidewalk components. Number two, the district parking ramp project. Um, I've used 150 stalls, as I mentioned before, as kind of the baseline. Um, you might have a parking ramp project that has 220 stalls, which means it's going to be more expensive than this. You might have one that's 100 stalls. Um, but just for budgeting purposes, um, the attempt is to make that a, a standard number, regardless of where you put it, whether it's on the west side or one of the options on the east side. Before you move on, can we maybe talk about these one by one? Oh, we'll, sure. We'll get yep, to the okay. end of 19. and. I won't remember what we talked about True. first, or so my thoughts were first. Um, and so I, I'm open to feedback from the group on how you want to go through this. Um, I, I think it's helpful to get some initial indication. So maybe as we go through these, just to throw an option out, if anyone has any strong feelings around kind of a categorization, please, you know, kind of share those thoughts. Some of these I think I maybe have an initial reaction to and some other ones I don't, but I'm interested in obviously hearing all of your thoughts. Um, there are, there's 19, 19 of these, them. right? Yeah. So we're not gonna spend a ton of time on each one, but I do think it's worth at least maybe, maybe seeing where we have consensus, where there's differences might actually be of value. And also full caveat, we've looked at this for about 20 minutes and so um, you know, I, I think that we're looking for gut reactions here. Mm -hmm. um, your educated reaction that you would have maybe in a couple of weeks is probably more valuable than tonight. But I think maybe just to, I, I think it's helpful for Bruce to have some initial feedback and then I, I'll be, I always learn whatever I hear from others as well. So um, so let's maybe just start with this first one, the, the Lake Street Streetscape Project. Any initial thoughts or strong opinions upon how this would be classified, either catalyst, early phase, later phase, or opportunistic? If the state doesn't turn back to Washington County, then there's going to be some dollars invested in that. If we get some significant redevelopment along that area, and I think that that may be close to a tipping point, as folks see that there is a plan, we could include some of some requirements for participation in that as part of redevelopment. So I'd love to see that in, in the two to five year, but with the, the caveat that if, if something is happening, we take advantage and leverage those happenings. So it's almost a combination of a really phase and opportunistic. No, my, my, my opinion. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that's a really mm -hmm. good point. As soon as we can, and there's just a lot of moving parts there, and also one with a big dollar amount, and the more we're able to get partnership dollars, the easier it is. So, any other thoughts on that? All right, let's go on to the district parking ramp project at six point seven million dollars. Thoughts here? Side parking ramp, you do have to build. Oh, 
conceivably, well, if you decide you. Also at the last meeting it was brought up that if the parking ramp is well enough connected to second, maybe second becomes an at grade enough of a crossing. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I, I, I struggle with, with having the, the west parking ramp at two million million dollars skyway. Any other options that can accomplish the same thing? Mm -hmm. Other thoughts on well, I, mean, I think that lakeside parking project would be opportunistic because you don't have to do it. You just don't. That would project, I mean, they're great. I walked around them all weekend in Rochester, but you don't need one right there. I mean, you can, people cross the street all the time now, especially if you have the right setup. Personally, also, um would like to see us. So I, th I think we're both of these options. Well, I guess all three of the parking options were somewhat opportunistic based on timing of redevelopment. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're not completely in the driver's seat to the extent that we are looking for a redevelopment opportunity to trigger a parking project. Um, but ideally, I'd, I'd like to see some increased demand before we go to the community and say, we think our next best, you know, investment of your dollars is at this parking garage. I, I, I would like to see us get some low hanging fruit and some smaller projects done first. Um, also with the thought that perhaps there is a substantial redevelopment of the gone project and the current Vanelli's block, mm -hmm. those things are gonna increase demand. And um, so I, it's, it's not where I would start, but I think again, mm -hmm. we're a little bit out of the driver's seat with timing because if we wanna be opportunistic or if we're looking for some partnership for that. Later phase at least, I would, right. I would agree. I just don't wanna be short-sighted either, you know, and, and because that's one of the biggest complaints we hear about parts in the park in the summer. Mm -hmm. I'm, I drive around and drive around and drive around. I can't find a place to park, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, yeah, so I just I just want to be sure that we are cognizant of that as well. Other thoughts? So I'm hearing kind of either later phase or opportunistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. <clears throat> the development has to drive that yeah. as far as I see. You, know, mm -hmm. you don't you wouldn't want to try this to drive the development. I just wouldn't. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Kind of covered both two and three. Do you want to just do a quick intro of the Absolutely. Paseo project? Yep. So the Paseo project, if you remember, is that broad pedestrian way from Lake Street to the lakefront, essentially going through the parking, or excuse me, the boat launch area. <clears throat> so in that location, it would mean that the boat launch would need to be moved first. So this is one of those uh, issues where there is a logistical uh, sequence and the idea is that uh, this would be that connection point from retailing on Lake Street right down to the park. Um, it's at $2.8 million. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one, $750,000. Um, so. I, I like the idea regardless of whether it's in the location that it's proposed with the like even if we do don't relocate i like the idea of having that connection from lake street down i do too mm -hmm. i really regardless do regardless of where it's at a hundred percent okay as far as time i think that seems like it could be an earlier phase uh project than, than or and or up, up, obviously if something happens then uh, well but mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I just realized now that I missed the Skyway project. We'll come back to that. I think we kind of picked up some comments on Skyway <clears throat> related to parking, mm -hmm. so. Okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. Okay. Other? Real quick with this Paseo, I mean, isn't there already I mean, pathways on that side of the street that could we 
do some of this that they're talking about, make it sooner than later, when, rather than waiting until the boat launch is gone, but just connect Lake Street intentionally instead of it just being like, we forgot An to pull alley. this weed. Yeah. Uh, I think there's probably some property, either redevelopment or acquisition, you know, that you could leverage in order to construct the Paseo through the, the portion that uh, currently has buildings on it. There are some kind of alley connections from Lake Street to the back side of the buildings. There's one that I can think of. Um, and that may be the best opportunity um, until redevelopment happens. So yeah, I could see maybe an interim solution uh, that would be a relatively low cost approach to get this thing um, put in mm -hmm. and then a more permanent solution with redevelopment when that portion of Lake Street redevelops. The downtown beautification group has talked about a couple of those alleys that are um, just just awful that if they were cleaned out from the junk and graded a little bit with a couple of tables or a couple of benches a couple more pots <laughs> <laughs> um, that those could be a serious amenity for downtown with not a lot of dollars the trouble is the property owners are making sure that there was I don't know if those were ever planted as alleys or not. As alleys? Yeah, if they were planted as alleys, that helps. I think one is. I think that'd be easy enough to find out. Yeah, I think one is. Dan? <laughs> <clears throat> no. I think um, kind of tying into that Paseo project when I talk about low hanging fruit, it seems to me like that kind of that whole Lakeside Memorial Park area and shoreline could be done fairly quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, in that one to two year phase and then sort of a, a movement, maybe west. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the unanswered question is what would we do with that boat launch? Mm -hmm. Right? And, right. And so, um, it's difficult to make a decision about what to do there, you know, when we don't necessarily know what we're going to do with that boat launch. Yep. And I do think it needs to be addressed. I think that boat launch project might be a, an early project. Mm -hmm. sure. okay. Yep. Just finding a spot for the new one is right. going to be a... At least knowing what options are and costs of options and getting mm -hmm. some community feedback is going to guide so many other decisions. Yeah. So. All right, are we up to number five, the um, downtown trail loop project? Yep. So the again, the downtown trail loop is the horseshoe portion of the loop that connects Hardwood Creek Trail to this loop on the south end at first and on the north side at second. <clears throat> uh, and a portion of it is through Lakeside Memorial Park. Um, if the gone block, the Vanelli's, I'm not sure what to call it, the Vanelli's block redevelops um, through that portion, uh, it really makes sense to link this with redevelopment. On the north side, uh, it would essentially use existing green space or adjacencies to parking. So it could be, you know, it might be a little narrower than ultimately you would want it, but it could squeeze through. But isn't that the, that's the Lakeside Parkway project, right? That's a concern, not the downtown loop. I'm talking about loop. The loop trail. That's loop the, trail. the loop trail. Okay. <clears throat> the multicolored thing. The yellow. Yeah, the must, exactly. Yeah. The dashed must, mustard color line. Okay. And that would be impacted by the redevelopment in that area? It, the redevelopment opens up the opportunity for this to move through that portion Okay. Of space. I think it should be a very early priority. That's just one opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any of the trails, because that's really what's going to drive this thing. Mm -hmm. I would agree. And it's the part that is short of having some grant money from some outside partners, it's the part that is solely city or mm -hmm. more solely city driven than other parts of the project. That, yeah. 
Great, okay. The Hardwood Creek Trail Wayside Park. <clears throat> Remember that's the area that is a, a narrow or a small portion of the overall loop trail, um, but creates that park space adjacent to Centennial Drive. I'll note also that this dollar amount that's identified for the wayside of 900,000 does not include land acquisition. That might be part of this. I have maybe a question for the group. So, um, so we've got five, um, in terms of developing new public space of which we have not done a lot of, for us to do two substantial projects near downtown is not, you know, it's substantial. and. Our whole goal of this is to do substantial projects, but um, is there a sequencing that the group would see between um, the downtown loop trail project or the wayside park project? Is there a prioritization that you would like to see go first? Um, be done simultaneously? Is there appetite to do both simultaneously? I'm just interested in some sequencing feedback. I think I think they I think they're connected very well. Mm -hmm. I I just think that the Hardwood Creek Trail Wayside Park would be later phase from the downtown loop. Just my own opinion. Mm -hmm. we so gonna, maybe early. Are we going to need that land to actually close the loop? Ah, that is a good question. I didn't hear the you, question. You would. That is, the land is needed to close the loop. Yeah, to close right? the loop, we would need that yeah. land. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Strategically, the land acquisition or the land protection, whether you acquire it or gain an easement, is critical. Is that Wayside Trail Park, does it have any parking built into it? It has parking built in conceptually for the development, um, not necessarily for the Wayside. There just isn't, there isn't enough space on that property. You, you may want to make um, a 6A and B because land acquisition is important and mm -hmm. you risk not getting the land if that's some, a project that you really want to do. It doesn't mean you have mm -hmm. to develop it, it just means you have to obtain it so that you can in the future do whatever you want to do with it. The call. Mm -hmm. more optimistic based on a developer. I, at first, when I, you you presented this, I thought it was kind of a crazy idea, but I do like it more and more, but it, I think it has to be maybe the development part of it where you mm -hmm. work with whoever's going to develop that and you're not purchasing that land. And in the short term, if you could run that trail just down to second and then across, there's a crosswalk there, maybe that's a, a hawk crossing now, and then back north on Lake to make that loop short term until something were to happen there. Mm -hmm. Don't know about buying that land just specifically. Remember if you were, um, if you were a, a buyer, um, it, it puts you in a partnership seat with a potential redeveloper. So if you were to acquire the land, um, hold out the portion that would be needed for the wayside, it allows you to begin to have conversations with development partners for the remainder and capture what you would need. So early, uh, if, we, if we go to the 6A and 6B concept of acquisition and then development, it sounds what, it, what I'm hearing, 6A would be an early phase um, and 6B would be maybe a later phase. On to seven. Seven lakeside park. Now this is the parkway. So this is the actual roadway component. Again, looping, it's a horseshoe shape, loops from Lake Street to Lake Street using first on the south side and second on the north side. So this involves reconstruction of components of the parking lots. Um, and again, a portion of it could be done in conjunction with the Vanelli's block redevelopment.
Yeah, I mean, I'd see this as part of a redevelopment in, in phases, because if, you know, if you do that Lakeside Parkway through the current Lakeside Memorial Park parking lot, you're going to lose parking lot, you know, parking uh, spaces, right? Yes. But you wouldn't want to do that until you've got a, you know, potentially a ramp. Mm -hmm. um, but you can certainly do it on the south side of Broadway. It's true. Perspectives. This one's also challenging because it's significantly impacted both by the okay. the gone block to the south, but then also potentially whatever we're going to do with the boat launch. And so it's mm -hmm. kind of literally in the middle. So got some fair amount of contingencies on either side. Got it. Next, Broadway Avenue uh, Gateway Project. This is Centennial Drive. Oh. Centennial Drive. Sorry, I missed another one. Uh, number eight, Centennial Drive Streetscape Project, um, all the way from second on the south to second on the north. Just my opinion, this one fits in whenever it is not going to be disrupted by other projects because the right. this is going to be the the thoroughfare that's heavily used when other projects are happening. And so let's just be careful to sequence doing it all at once. Agree. Okay. Bro now we're on the Broadway Avenue Gateway Project. Uh, relatively low cost, $130,000, represents a, a spruce up of those gateway components that exist there today. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think, I think it should be a catalyst project. It's certainly the early phase. Okay. That's just me. I would agree. I, th I think this is a foundational. Easy one. But I think you can find some partners on this too. I really do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number 10, First Avenue Southwest Neighborhood Trail Connector. So this is the short trail connection uh, through the former elevator site, essentially, um, connecting the neighborhood to the Harvard Creek Trail. Thoughts on timing? Probably opportunistic with whatever they're going to do to redevelop that space. Okay. Sense for that. Okay. Also, from a budget standpoint, it's a project that fits in easier mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. some other of these larger, trickier pieces. Right. Okay. Uh, number 11, the boat ramp relocation project. <clears throat> Again, this one just represents the removal of the boat launch and restoration of that space to parkland at $240,000. So there's no money left in there for redoing the one somewhere else. Okay, just no. want to make that absolutely clear. That would be so a cost I, estimate I would think that you'd want prepared as part of the feasibility or relocation study. I would think there'd be some DNR involvement in a case like that though. It very well could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dan, is there typically DNR funding dollars for those types of projects or is it? You and I are sharing yeah. the brain tonight. Um, <laughs> is there, is there DNR relocation, are there, is there cost participation typically like? There was. With, are they as time. nice as their aeronautics cousins? <laughs> I, I don't think they're quite as nice as the aeronautics cousins in terms of 95 5 okay. cost participation. Um, we did get cost participation on this current location that was there. We did get the grant to allow for construction of it. Um, it may be a little bit of an uphill battle saying we're moving, if we're closing an existing launch that they already gave us grant funding for to put it somewhere else. But that being said, you could always ask for grant dollars, say we need a better location where you can get easier access, et cetera, et cetera. So, I think it's on the table, but I don't know what their, their appetite would be to fund that. Get your foot in there, I think this is an example where we need to break it up into some smaller pieces. And this preliminary study, mm -hmm. I think, is going to be important yep. to just mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. have some options and to know some cost options to even know if it's something to even seriously consider. Yeah, and new, lo new location options. That's I right. Mean, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yes. 
It has a rippling effect on other things. I think that's the biggest question. Is it what really is, is the cost? I mean, what are you gonna, is there a nearby yeah. location and what's the cost? So, so maybe with this one, as far as breaking it up, what I should do is pull out the relocation study, the cost of the study, make that kind of a um, 11A, <clears throat> and then 11B is the actual work. We could do that. I'm not a vote person, but is there any place that uses a model that you have a subscription, you purchase a yearly subscription to use a boat launch, or you have a, a toll a la state of Texas? We can use toll. You have a toll to go in or, or something like that that would pay back the money that we might spend to find a new location. I can, there is that model that does exist. Wiper Lake has a pay access. You have to get a permit. I can't remember what the permit cost is, but that allows you to utilize that access. We couldn't use it on the current space because our grant agreement, you can't charge from DNR funding on the grant. But if you did relocate the access, you could charge a user fee to use that access. And then you'd have to have the permit displayed in the vehicle that allows you to use the access. If you don't, then you could ticket that vehicle for using the access without a permit. So basically it's a private development. It's a private ownership of that launch, right? Well, the city still maintains ownership. They just charge the access, use that access. And it, it, the one I'm thinking of, it's somewhere located in White Bear Lake. And I think it's in a rather high use area where they want to try to constrain parking in there, but they do charge for it. It's a public launch fee. That's all it really is. Never heard of. I know in private, in private areas like, you know, resorts and that kind of thing, they'll have a <coughs> pay to pay to play thing. Um, how is that? How is that managed then? Usually it's, well, what I've seen in my past was that it's really just a voluntary honor system. And you, you, Usually there's a box out there, please. There's a box out dollars. there, you have envelopes <laughs> and you give little golf like bee pencils and that's it. I mean, I've you, seen that. you tear off the top of the envelope and put it in your windshield in your car and you go from there. It's, again, it's enforcement is the issue there. I've but, seen that in state parks. Yeah, and they you have, don't want it, I mean, you don't want to man it because it just takes, right. you can't pay that to man it either. The launch, if I might, the launch in Hudson does this and you pay, but they also have somebody that's at the, um, coming into parking the parking area. lot. They're not staffed there all the time, but during the major times where people are launching, there's somebody staffing that who goes around and checks. Yeah, you can also have hybrid where you where you sell an annual pass and you yep. stick it on your trailer and on your car. That way, when somebody comes by and checks the parking spaces that's designated for the trailer and the car or the truck, if you have it, you're there, you're good. Or like I said, if you do it manually that day, you're just a, a somebody that comes along wants to do it. You have a tear off pass and put it in there. Or these days, I'm sure there's probably now like electronic parking boxes. I'm sure there's electronic boating. You could just do the same thing. It's just you could modify the, the electronic parking ticket, or parking, system. parking permit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's ways. Plug twenty five cents in a parking meter anymore. Right. It's hard to say. Yeah, yeah. So there's ways to do that. I mean, if you if you want to consider, I think you wait and see what the the relocation study is and what it's going to be. But if you want to explore that, that's a pretty simple model so you can look at. Just out of curiosity, Dan, how much was that grant to build this one? It, off the top of my head, I want to say it was less than a hundred thousand, like maybe oh. seventy thousand. To that was just to put the and that we already had the land there, and we already were doing a lot of the work, and they combined it with our existing improvements that we we're making to the park at that point. But I thought it was seventy to a hundred thousand, if I recall. And how heavily is Third Lake that launch used? I drive by there and I rarely see you think it's is it no, heavily used? Lakeside, Lakeside launch is twice uh, is probably at least two or boats two or three times more than even the third lake so five thousand boats came in through Lakeside. okay what about third lake then third lake was under three thousand yeah i see the part the problem over at third lake is the number of parking spots <laughs> No room to expand the parking? Yeah, sure. <laughs> land there. Unless you buy a private residence to the south. 
Okay, number 12, the transient boat dock project. Um, this one is reliant on relocation of the boat launch because it would be in that spot. Which would it have to? Well, um, I mean, it's a dock. It's a dock, yep. I mean, why can't you do that right now where the existing public dock is? Jerry's real question is, how about by the 4th of July? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a dock. <laughs> yeah. Get it and done. there might. Do you think there? Have you kind of looked at that spot and Paddle you believe that there would be enough space to, to do finger well, dots? Depending upon the configuration, I, okay. I think there is. I mean, yeah. it, to me, that's low hanging fruit. It's something we've talked about getting more, you know, parking down for boats downtown. Yeah. Whether it's there by where the existing one is or mm -hmm. where it's when the boat launch is moved, it's the same dock site. Yeah. Right. I like that. Sounds good to me. We will, I mean, we can look at that and probably modify the plan also. Well, and the timing with DNR permitting yep. and the questions Blake has been wise in asking and timing and yeah, prohibitors of that type of a project um, might be more of more of the barrier. But good, mm -hmm. all the more reason to pursue some of those answers to know what that option might look like. Excellent. Should, oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Uh, do you want to see that one early then? Are we talking about a catalyst project or an early? I think that's I think, a, I think an early phase early. at least. Early phase? At least, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any disagreement on an early project? Yeah, I think. Okay. Lakefront Banshell project, this one also is reliant on relocation of the, of the boat launch. I think this actually one is reliant. On relocation of the boat launch, I'm pretty sure. And two and a half million dollars. I'd kind of make it a later phase, and if that's the case, I, in my opinion, because you got to can't do one without the other. I also, um, just kind of my thoughts on this Banshell project. It, it's a nice additional amenity, but it is replacing something that already is a strength of the park or something, you know, mm -hmm. having a space to gather while a band show would be even better. Um, it's an enhancement of something we have versus there's a lot of things on this product plan that are things that just have no alternative today. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Should it be an opportunistic project then? Uh, it's fully within our control. So I don't know if I okay. put it as opportunistic. Okay. I don't know. What do Sounds you good. Later. I think maybe the part that is the big dependency is whether we move the boat launch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of yeah. between that early later. Yeah, that kind of phase. Right. It is though. Even though we we can do some of this now, it is a nice catalyst project to the extent we're able to do it. I mean, it, mm -hmm. so right. So number fourteen, the wild ice winter wreck. Project. It's a catalyst project. A hundred percent agree. Mm -hmm. For relatively small dollars, and um, it's also it, it has that year-round effect, or brings some year-round programming, mm -hmm. which is a, a whole currently. <laughs> yeah. Well, you would just want to cut a hole in the ice. I mean, <laughs> just want a hole in the middle of the rink, right? <laughs> We'll just slide you over a little bit. <laughs> uh, the Veterans Memorial Project. We don't have a cost estimate on that one. Is there anything in the plan that's competing? There's nothing in the plan that's competing for that space. So we've kind of mm -hmm. got it earmarked. It could go in at any time, right? Mm -hmm. There's okay. So it's kind of up to the folks that are doing that. I know that uh, the Legion is kind of leading the way on that particular project, and and uh, so be. I think they would love to do it as soon as they can. You know. I think, I think so too. Catalyst? Yeah, I would say catalyst for sure. Okay. What's the height of that memorial? I haven't seen any plans on it yet. We didn't get it. There's not a lot of height except for the um, um, flight. Most of it is low. Yeah, most of the time it's going to be wheelchair accessible. And yeah. right I was just wondering there. because it's in that, isn't it in that the line shed? of sight that you were talking about? Yeah, it is relatively low yeah. based on the drawings that I've seen. Yeah. And the ones I've seen, I haven't seen the plans on this one, but you go around, you see these different memorials, they're all just like a patio, basically, maybe with some 
Central sculptural pieces. pieces yeah, that, central pieces and whatever. Yeah. And they're in usually a, some sort of a signage or whatever with the names of the people that are involved or, or the ones that are. And the memorial yeah, brick. There. Yeah, memorial, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a brick too. So that's, that's going to be pretty low. Yep. Low profile. The Beach House Project. So this is at 720,000. It includes the demolition of the existing structure, uh, either interior build out of um, space within an existing building or construction of a new building. I think this cost <clears throat> is a bit heavy if it is interior build out, but it's hard to know what direction it'll go. Depend it on the developer, isn't it? If they're right. Mm -hmm. It means that you know if you made it an earlier phase project, you would maybe begin discussions with the developer right away about that possibility. You're talking about putting it in the existing building, not mm -hmm. new building. Uh, right. Either or, there, there are options that are identified in the plan. One would be a new structure, generally where the playground is today, and another would be within the existing building. Yeah, but it wouldn't have anything to do with what John might choose to do with the Benelli's block. Yeah, if no. we use their, their building for a warming house, isn't that what you were talking about? Before? Yeah, their existing building. They won't redevelop the one where a lease arrangement or a, a condominium arrangement with uh, the owners of that existing commercial building or a portion of the property. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I. I don't think that's gonna fly. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I just. You know, I think there's some pretty significant ownership of that space by the current tenant. In that lower level. So actually, the this what we've heard is that the space that potentially is available is um, in transition right now. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's not the the salon. Yeah, so there was another, salon. There was another, another tenant on the north side. Mm -hmm. And we heard that from the developer. Okay. That might be that might be the opportunistic, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. if there is. Okay. Yep. All right, uh, the shoreline enhancement project at 200,000, essentially that is reconstructing and enhancing the, the structures of the shoreline all the way through the park. You do the um, kayak canoe launch without determining what's happening with the dockage first? So I, uh, yes, you can. Yeah, that would be adjacent to the existing beach. And I don't think there are any other suggested changes that would impact that. I think it should be a catalyst. It should be. Yeah, yeah, because I would think you'd want to get it done right away. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> the snowmobile lake trail project, very small amount, $25,000. It would just, what I'm calling formalizing and clarifying that access route, mm -hmm. which today is a little bit circuitous and overgrown. Yeah, I, I think too. that also is a catalyst project. I also think we have some nice opportunity to partner with the Forest Lake. There's a snowmobile association that is quite active mm -hmm. okay. um, that I think we'll get some nice partnership from. And then finally, the, those uh, standalone planning studies, there are three of them that we've identified so far. The district parking study would do a, a detailed and kind of deep dive into um, into the, the needs of downtown parking uh, in a more, more detailed way than we've done so far. The wayfinding plan, um, and I should mention also that wayfinding is incorporated into all of these projects. So the notion of the wayfinding plan is that it creates a district-wide strategy for wayfinding that would be implemented with projects as they're developed. So you'll, there's wayfinding in all, almost all of these efforts. And then finally, the boat launch relocation study that we talked about. And we could, uh, we already talked about moving the boat launch relocation study into a, a phased activity of another item. We could separate all of these out and just include them with their respective projects in that way. 
And that might make the most sense, actually. Any other studies that you can think of that I should be making sure we keep on the radar? Well, it's not a study. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody has to do some work, so classify it, whatever, call it whatever we want. But okay. I do think, so we've just, I almost, on many of these, we talked about having, you know, just some partnership opportunity or it's depending dependent upon being opportunistic. Mm -hmm. I think there is some work to be done on going back through key partners with the plan to just talk about what is the impact on some very specific parcels and then just to get some initial feedback. So just you've done some of this already of, mm -hmm. for example, there is a potential of a tenant in transitions. Well, well, that's great. We should know that and mm -hmm. we should be planning for that mm -hmm. versus I have full confidence we're going to have other um, projects that we might have as opportunistic, but we're going to realize it's just really a long shot that they're just either we don't have a great partner, the partner's not interested. They might be great. They just might not be interested. Um, or we're going to, in that process, discover other barriers that should be considered. And so mm -hmm. I think that there's just a general um, partner discussion phase. Mm -hmm. um, we've probably listed at least 10 of them tonight that should be on radar. And I'm not sure necessarily, Bruce, your role in that. But um, mm -hmm. I do think that would help to inform kind of some next steps. Yeah, great. OK, sounds great. I'm hoping that as redevelopment opportunities come forward, that the council is thinking about what you will require of developers that will help these projects, as opposed to um, sometimes developers that we've seen in the past, I have this demand, or I'm going to go away. Well, OK, bye, see you. Nice, nice to know you. Um, because the success of this will depend on how strong you all are in saying, this is our vision. Yes, you own the land. Yes, you're going to do a development. But you also have to meet our vision. So I, I hope that you all are thinking about that as lots of these opportunities come forward. Yep. But at the same time, I think we can sell the idea that there's an opportunity for the developer, too. Right. And that's the whole right. idea. I think so that's what, what, you're, what you're alluding to here. Right. Absolutely. And so if you're suggesting something maybe in the, like the uh, park dedication fee, something similar to that? Because if this did come to fruition, you know, with all new development around the lake and the park and so forth, there would definitely be a, de a benefit to anybody that would build there. No question there. But then developers often come to you and say, yeah, um, yeah. Will you will you do all the infrastructure here? Will you waive this fee? Will you waive that fee? Been and there, done that. Pardon? We've been there, done that. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I just. I we I understand. I want to bring it forward, sir. I understand exactly what you're saying, Susan. It's true. It's always a freebie to be had or looked at or asked for. Okay. Um, timing. So we've gone through all the projects. We will um, be update kind of, we'll put out a phasing strategy as part of the comments that we've received from you, finalize our draft implementation chapter, and then I'll begin working on the sources and uses strategy, and allow, allow that to uh, develop in coordination with city staff over the next couple of three weeks. Um, <clears throat> what we're, Proposing or thinking is that we will have the draft document up for the final round of online engagement beginning this Thursday and that we would tentatively schedule a public open house uh, on the 2nd of June. Thursday, the 2nd of June. I got that right, didn't I, Dan? Yeah. We would leave online engagement up through about Monday, the 6th. At that point, we would tally uh, the engagement that we received, both in person and online, just we've, like we've done in previous phases, and um, update the document and be ready to redistribute to you by the end of that week. 
So around the 9th, 10th, something like that, based on input that we received. Um, I think you meet, well, sometime in that time period, uh, there might be some presentation to other commissions. Correct. The thought right now is during the open house, the other commissions, planning commission and parks, lakes, and trails could come to the open house, be able to speak directly with Bruce. So they, instead of having him go to the meetings, they can come to the open house and then also see the plan, offer any questions, comments, feedback at that point. So those commissions would come to the open house and then all that would get incorporated into the final version of the draft. So June 2nd, public open house evening, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. And then what was the next? Then we would we would leave online engagement up for a few more days beyond that open house. Understood. <clears throat> so we would close down online community engagement on the 6th of June. Yep. We would tally those results, update the document, and get that redistributed to you as a, a draft final, I don't know what we call it, draft final document. And is there, and you would be looking for council action, do you have a date when you're looking for council action? We'd want to bring this back to the EDA for a recommendation to the council at your meeting Thank you for in that call. June. Yep, thank you for that call. I, okay, the, so we would, June 27th, is that what you're, and to be determined is fine. Is, yeah, at this point I'd say to okay. be determined, because we'd also probably want to bring it this to the Park Planning Commission and Parks, Lakes, and Trails just to see, you know, to make sure that there is nothing in there that they have you know, heartburn over and formally get recommendation for adoptions. So all the commissions would then make the recommendation to adopt someone council adopts it, everybody's on the same page. I'm open to feedback. I really like the idea though of going to each of the individual commissions first and looking for, and, and I think you, parks and planning would be great. I would just ask that time, I would say you're probably looking at a July adoption, just, just based on sequencing of all of that, just trying to get everything through, yep. um, which still works out. Mm -hmm. When you say adoption, you mean adoption of the plan, the plan that approved mm -hmm. the plan. Before we get there, <laughs> um, can we have a meeting and go over the financing feasibility of this so that we're not, um, something we can't do projects or are you saying we can do this it's just a matter of uh... little of both we can do it depends on you know the appetite for funding it you know was option number one but you know in terms of you know with Bruce kind of diving back in and giving us more detail on the financing plan with sort of this feedback we will have a better a clearer picture of what the financing look like and then we'll work with the plans that Bruce develops to actually start to sequence out projects and put the funding strategies together. So we can, well, we, when the plan is finally adopted, there will be a financing angle associated with it. Although that could be something to change based on how these projects do finally sequence out. Although I ask you that this is nothing more than a blueprint that we're trying to shoot for. And it's all gonna depend on development and cost, and it may or may not happen. That's the way I see it. But you gotta start out with a plan. You gotta start out with, this is what our, what our vision is. And go from there. So, mm -hmm. so we and, can do. and to Jenny's point, and to be clear, um, and I think we need to continue to be clear: adopting the plan, even with the budget dollars that are it, included in the plan, does not mean that a single dollar gets spent. It doesn't mean that a single project moves <laughs> forward until we have subsequent action and approvals. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It is really adoption of a long-term vision with mm -hmm. some dollars associated. I, I do think we need to be. And thank you for mentioning this that we have to continue to talk about. We have minor dollars in the EDA budget for projects that would be include, you know, included in this, but um, there is a lot of funding gaps to cover mm -hmm. and um, certainly a whole host of other predecessor activities before we actually were to start. Mm -hmm. We're not going to start a bulldozer tomorrow. That's all there is to it. And I think that's one of the things that's going to come up at a public meeting is where are you going to come up with $28 million? Mm -hmm. Well, that's but, why I think we should be prepared. Well, that's what we're trying to do here tonight, I think. And, mm -hmm. and, and the idea that we have all these different possibilities for funding mm -hmm. along the way, and it's not going to happen one day. We're talking about 20-year projects. Oh. 15, 
Anyway, <laughs> I'd suggest getting it done like, in a decade. Like I but said, like it's I just said, me. It's one of your projects. <laughs> like I think you had some thoughts. So I, I go back to the going public with this, with without any other options or recommendations of where we relocate. The, if this is if we're gonna, if this is going public as we're relocating this, that's our long term plan. Maybe it's mm -hmm. ten years. Maybe it's fifteen. Like I think people are gonna going to have a hard time. Some are going to have a hard time with that, especially if we don't have, well, it could be here, it could be there. Is there any any opposition of it? Does it have to be, if we're going to relocate it, is there any thoughts on opposition of it? Does it have to be somewhere close to downtown? Can it be somewhere else? Lake Jerry, the watershed district just bought all that property adjacent to the DNR ramp down there. Is there some opportunity for parking there and increase the size of that ramp? Maybe, maybe that's an option. Or I think to acquire land on the lake or to for a boat, boat launch is going to be just crazy expensive. Is it a better opportunity to buy some parking somewhere around downtown and not allow trailer parking down downtown and that they're using some type of a golf cart system or something or for transportation to get there? I, I just it's a big dollar amount and that that doesn't even we're not even talking on the 27 or 20 million dollars. We're not even talking about buying any land on the lake to relocate a boat launch. Right. That could be another five million dollars or, or buying land for trails so i, I just think mm -hmm. I, i'm a, be a little concerned with on the EDA, eda side recommending the council to adopt something where we don't have at least there's maybe potential options of where a boat launch would go and i think you're you're right i also think um and carrying on your point, it's really important that instead of the communication be proposed boat launch, that it is, you know, consider relocating is hmm. more the recommendation than closing. Mm -hmm. Can the adoption be contingent on a suitable site for the boat launch? Um, <clears throat> so but just thinking it, about as this. As it stands, right? If you make it contingent on, you, this might be hanging out there, out there for a long, long time. So maybe what we could do in order to address this is identify the projects that are reliant on the relocation of the boat launch, identify those within the plan as reliant projects, and um, put more discussion around the next, you know, the study, more discussion around that a follow on to this plan is to study what's possible in relocation. Um, that way you can get this adopted and you begin can begin working on your finance strategies for other elements. You can begin doing the relocation study and um, keep things moving mm -hmm. while recognizing that there are elements of this plan that are reliant on relocation to boat launch. Maybe what you do since it's a concern is that you ha have staff look at what the boat relocation study is, how much it will cost, and adopt it the same night you adopt the plan so that you've already have that in action. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most expedient way. I don't think we can get the information you're looking for as fast as you want the adoption to go, but we could look at pricing and whoever does those kind of plans and have that ready for adoption so that it's in the same time and we'll know what the number is to, to study that and where that's going to be. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, adopt a lot of plans without the dollars in place. You it's stock plans, sewer plans, water plans. You don't have all those dollars in place. You say, we're going to need this in the future and as we go along. Yeah, without the dollars, it ain't happening. Simple as that. You know, it doesn't matter what kind, of plan you, what kind of a plan you agree on or develop. I mean, what we're looking for is a vision, I think. And beyond that, can't do much about it until that funding starts mm -hmm. to fall into place. Mm -hmm. Because the folks that don't live near the, the downtown area are going to go, why am I going to spend my tax money helping the folks downtown? So there has to be that, that balance with the private development within the downtown area. Mm -hmm. No question about it. And then the people that use the park, too. I agree. We have to be careful with that communication. Yep. What, you know, what are those terms we're using? At this point, it is a vision. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
other kind of logistics next steps? Um, June second community engagement meeting. What does that look like? What is? We think it. We kind of view it as an open house. <clears throat> so the thought. Let's say we start at you know six o'clock. Might be seven o'clock, but let's say we start at six. We would do a time certain six thirty orientation presentation of the draft plan. Um, but beyond that, uh, we would answer questions at that point also, kind of as a group. But for the most part, it would be open house format with people able to um, talk, ask questions, leave comments, post a note comments as an example, something like that. Are there vision boards up and mm -hmm. vi visuals? People are kind of taking a tour. Yep. yep. Excellent. I would, um, I like what you, I like the t solutions we had online for, you know, putting up the post-its and you know, mm -hmm. kind of the, the electronic post-its, whatever we can do to kind of capture impressions and to even breaking this out into some smaller components and providing as many visuals as we can, I think would be helpful. Okay, great. We'll do that. Other, any other thoughts around next steps or just overall where we are based on tonight's conversation? I, I do like the idea of bringing the commissions fully up to speed on where we are with this. I think they Absolutely. have an opportunity to serve as great ambassadors too for this as they're out in the community and yeah. you know interacting with community residents uh, to get excited and talk about it and you know so I, I think it's really important that we bring them along with us mm -hmm. um, um, rather than have them be sort of a ad advisory we're we're just getting input from you and now we're going to you know I guess we do to some degree, but I think you know where I'm going with that. Yeah, absolutely. Just, yeah, I it think sounds it's great. Really critical. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Dan, Patrick, Bruce, anything else you need from us this evening? All right. Any items we haven't already discussed? <coughs> Last comments. All right, excellent. Bruce, thank you for all of the work on this. Thank you. This is fantastic, and um, look forward to next steps here. Um, and that being the end of our planned agenda tonight, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I hear a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. And we've got a second. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed. And we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Can't get <laughs>